Hello and welcome back to Sparrow's End Home and Garden. I'm Mel and I make videos about my home and garden. In this video I filmed a garden tour so you can get up to date with how things are going out there. And as I was editing it I realised that I hadn't filmed any kind of intro or outro so I'm hopping on to do that now. Now I haven't made videos in a long time and I think you can tell when you're watching this garden tour you'll notice that I sound quite quiet and reserved and I hadn't really got back into the swing of things properly. It also wasn't helped by the fact that I have been testing out a new mic which I'm not very happy with and I'm probably not going to keep because as I was doing the editing I also noticed that my voice was quite quiet because of the microphone and it was picking up a lot of background noise as well which I'm not used to. The microphone that I normally use is one that perches on top of my phone as I'm walking around and I much prefer that so I'm probably going to go back to using that one. But for the sake of consistency I've got this one on now but I'm probably never going to use it again. Anyway I hope that you enjoy this garden tour and if you're new around here click the subscribe button and the notification bell because there should be a lot more videos coming up soon. So this area here is just the side return on the Edwardian terrace that I live in and you can see that my neighbours have got this lovely trellis up on their side which I'm thinking of either matching on my side or possibly using these um, like support struts on the fence to maybe pin some up on my side as well and see if I can grow some climbers that don't mind growing in the shade in this area. I've also got some pots of garlic here um, and some, um, it's like a garlic chive but not quite. I've been experimenting with how small a pot I can grow garlic in and I have to say I think these are probably the limit. I think they're probably a little bit too small. If you compare that to these much larger tubs that actually have got more cloves of garlic planted in them. But if you look at the thickness of some of these stems now, um, it's probably the thickness of a couple of pencils and uh, yeah they're doing a lot lot better whereas the ones in tubs are all the small tubs sorry the small pots are more like this scraggly one here these ones are a lot better though so I'm quite pleased with those I have a little poly greenhouse here which has got a cover on it that's far too big for it because I bought the wrong size when I needed to replace the old one there's more garlic in this tub but it's looking a bit messy. I need to take out that kale plant that's been there since last year. I've also got this tub that I'm using as a mini greenhouse as well. These really useful storage boxes are completely fine to use. I think they go down to like a minus 15 temperature. If I come around the side here, this is very messy. This has got piles of detritus and prunings and things from where I've been pruning some hedging I've got the honeysuckle up here that needs pruning as well and there's also a chocolate scented um, akebia growing up here as well they've all gone a bit wild I've got pots of tulips and daffodils everywhere too these are looking very beautiful it's a lovely pink and a sort of ready yellow one there. don't know the names of the varieties because I just bought up a load of cheap sort of mixed bags of them so I'm not sure what they are. I think this one had daffodils in it but they have finished. Oh and what's really interesting is this is a pot that I clearly didn't finish. If you have a look the bulbs aren't even covered but all of these bulbs produced flowers and normally you would expect them to come up blind if they haven't been covered with enough soil if they haven't been um, buried deeply enough but I found this you know down the bottom of the garden and I clearly hadn't finished it um, and it's done it's done okay got some more over here what have we got um, there's it's like a peaches and cream daffodil a lot of them are being eaten by um slugs already this year that one's looking rather beautiful and there's some lovely white tulips in there as well and then these ones here are starting to come out i think these ones i have got the variety for somewhere i'll see if i can look that up and pop that on screen and um, for you these are like a sort of um lemon and lime colored tulip and they're very very beautiful very lovely. Um, you can tell I haven't actually tied it up before I started filming. <laughs> There's a pot of mint there. 
Uh, what's on the ground? More mess probably. The welly boots that I still want to fill with some compost and grow some stuff in. I've got a half filled bag of old compost there. Um, let's have a look at this. Right, so here I've got some shallots that were autumn planted. You can see the little telltale slug trail there. So yeah, they need watering. They're doing okay though. I've got some autumn sown spring onions in this tub that have done okay considering a lot of things were just kind of chucked in at the end of last year. There's more garlic growing in here but again it hasn't done very well and these old tubs these were not suitable for use outside. I kind of knew that when I started using them. It was either that or sort of throw them away so I've managed to get I think about four years worth of growing out of them and I basically whenever you touch them now they fall apart because the plastic's so brittle so they just kind of sit there and I don't touch them <laughs> or do anything but they will get um, disposed of this year. That's my blackcurrant sage that's had quite a healthy haircut already this year. I um, haven't got anything on the benches yet really. These are just a few little irises that came up in February and look at this, this is some half dead fever view <laughs> that needs uh, watering and planting out into the garden. And this is my beautiful Japanese maple that I've had growing in a pot since it was yay high, since it was a tiny little thing. And it's not looking that great this year, to be honest. It had a major infestation of aphids when we had that bout of hot weather, we had that week where it was really, really hot, like that sort of mini heat wave, people were calling it. Well, mini heat wave for spring anyway. Um, and what I found was that I ended up with things covered in aphids and then some uh, freezing temperatures came along and seemed to do away with the aphids, but there just still seems to be quite a lot of damage on these leaves, which I don't normally see at this time of year. So I'm a bit sad about that. If I show you this, you can see how much of a haircut the honeysuckle needs and the achebia has kind of grown into the honeysuckle um, and it's all just gone a bit wild, <laughs> basically. It's all a bit wild. Uh, there's some things in pots down here. There's some mint, I've uh, got like a curly leaved mint there, uh, some cyclamen and some bulbs of some sort and I can't remember which bulbs they are that are in there. And then this tends to be where I sit and look down the garden. I'm going to move that chair out of the way though because I will end up tripping over it. Um, pot of daffodils here which are pretty much finished apart from this. It's very bright isn't it? This little straggler down here and we've got some bulbs here on the right hand side. Um, it's a mixture of tulips and daffodils again. I think pretty much all of them. I think these might be a specially bought variety but the others were all part of just like lucky dip bags that I bought according to their colour. That's gorgeous. I think that might have been a separately purchased one. There's some more mint down in that pot there. So these are starting to look a bit scraggly and some of them have kind of finished and gone over so I will deadhead some of those later on today probably. And then over here, it's quite difficult to see them because my phone camera, bless it, can't handle the light that's going on at the moment. Um, but look at those, they're absolutely beautiful. I've got some of these ones that have three heads and some that have two. And then there's these gorgeous, which really you can't see on camera because it can't handle the white. They're absolutely gorgeous. There are a couple of bee hotels there, which are full of residents. We're gonna put another couple on that post. This is all my mess. And then this is the first bed on the right hand side. This had lots and lots of just plain bright yellow daffodils in it. They have been deadheaded and I will chop the stalks down about four to six weeks after I've deadheaded them. And that's just so that the energy will go back into the bulbs afterwards. The forget-me-nots are out, uh, the leaves here are for bluebells. There's also strawberries growing in this patch. There's a half dead rosemary that I think I gave a little bit too much of a haircut to last year. And it is a very old plant and does need replacing soon. The strawberries are well established, but they aren't the 
best strawberries in the world so I'm probably going to get some new varieties to try this year. And then on this right hand side you can see I've got some you can see I've got some finishing off to do around the um, the edges here on the pergola. There's uh, a buddleia that has been chopped back really hard. There's actually a clematis at the back here as well where the old fence is, old gate sorry, and it's a real thug of a clematis and every time I chop it back really really hard I end up thinking that I've killed it and then every year it comes back and I think no it's actually impossible to kill it it really is <laughs> impossible there's a couple of conifers here they're too close together the smaller one I do need to dig up and move there's this peony which is has a twig on it <laughs> um, but is almost ready to come into flower probably a couple of weeks time I'd expect those to be looking absolutely stunning and they do need dividing this year as well there's more um, tulips as we come down here. Um, the tree that you can see there is a eucalyptus tree. I might have shown that to you, that to you before. That needs its uh, top chopped off. There's a lovely berberis coming into leaf here as well. Lovely acid green coloured leaves. Loads of bluebells at the back here. There's a stray Japanese maple down here and that was one that I kind of rescued from a 50p bin and I chucked it in anywhere. Um, just to see if I could bring it back to life, which I have, <laughs> but it now needs digging up and moving somewhere sensible. More bluebells and the pheasant berry, which I've started to prune, but for some reason I've left these bits at the back here. Don't ask me why, a bit of an oversight. And there's a patch at the front here, which I've kind of left blank thinking, well, the pheasant berry gets so big, it takes up all of the room there, nothing can grow there. And then realised that I was being really stupid, basically, because I could fill it with crocuses and snowdrops, which will um, sort of flower and cover the area until the pheasant berry takes over. I mean, I could even put daffodils and things in there. I'm just, you know, sometimes, sometimes I'm really silly. But you can see the daffodils a bit better there. But you can also see my mess a lot better there as well. Um, and there's the bed that I was showing you before. There is a bamboo here, a bit of bramble going up that as well, which will need to be cut out. But this bamboo has been planted in its bucket, which is a way to stop it from spreading all over the place. These are two lilies that I do not like, and I definitely want to try and dig up the smaller of the two. I don't know if they're day lilies or stinking lilies, but they stink and they flower for about a day and then the flower drops off so they're basically they're just a waste of space and I'd love to plant something much much nicer down there. There is another peony down here um, I've got a tub here that I am collecting you can see that there's a clearly been gravel or something on this bed at some point in the past yeah I'm just kind of picking that out now as I work on that area because it's just really irritating you can't can't do anything in there very easily. I've got this slightly crooked um, wind sculpture there that was a gift from my nan. Um, I probably need to move its position actually because where it is when I sit up there on the pergola I can't actually see it so I might move that at some point this year. There's the berberis which is that red ready kind of orange coloured plant at the back there. There's a red rose bush We've got some forget-me-nots that are filling in some of the gaps here. I've got two spireas, spireas. Um, there's one there and then there's one called, I can't remember what variety that one is, and then there's one over here, so this one here, um, which is called Plumtastic. For some reason I can't remember the name of that one. There is a type of cyclamen over here and then there's another one um, down here with these lovely pale lemon if I move the forget-me-nots out of the way these lovely pale lemon flowers that's really beautiful really love those there's some daffodils that are pretty much finished some daffodils these red daff um red tulips sorry they are the first tulips that tend to come up in my garden 
there is an astrantia here it's what a one with a white flower we've got some snakes head fertility and we have something here i couldn't remember what it was it looked dead i dug it up and moved it into its own separate space it's got some bramble growing up it which um, i need to remove and there's a little bit of life again i gave it a prune as well i pruned it and then i moved it into a new spot um there's a little bit of life but i'm not convinced it's gonna come to much but we shall see let's come back over the left hand side there's a hawthorn here which ah, desperately needs me to again top it chop its head off uh, there's some beautiful golden marjoram there i've got this lovely heucura uh, you can see i have a problem with some cooch grass that's popping up if I stay on top of it if I kind of get on top of it at this time of year then it tends not to be too much of a problem I've got an oxalis and some mixed almost like ground cover scrambling plants there there's a beautiful sage plant there's more bulbs in here and some irises towards the back and there's some crocosmia, which is this slightly lighter, brighter green leaf. And then I have this horrible, horrible grass here, which self seeds everywhere and I want to get rid of it. It's a bit of a thug. In fact, I have found most ornamental grasses that I have tried to grow are very thuggish and I don't really like them very much. You can also see that there's some ground elder, which interestingly used to cover the entire garden but I've kind of got on top of it to the point where it crops up a little bit down here. But if I start to weed it at this time of year and pull it out, then it, it's not too bad and it kind of, it reduces every year. You can also eat it as well. You can eat it like spinach. It is an edible weed. Eat it like spinach. And then the very fresh leaves that are kind of like a bright yellowy green, um, they can be put into salads. So if you have got some, <laughs> before you dig the roots out, take the tops off and cook with them. There's mixed hedging along these borders. I couldn't tell you what it is without getting in close to them and checking the labels that I've probably left around the stems. I have got lots of rubbish here that's going out into these into the council waste bags this week. Big pile of it there. And then this is the area. Oh, let me tell you about my apple tree. So apple tree, absolutely completely neglected for about three or four years, completely covered in ivy, which I have started removing. It was honestly just in the most terrible state. You can see it's done so much damage to the trunk um to the branches it's just been kind of devastating for the poor plant poor plant poor tree i've kind of removed a load of the ivy from the trunk i've still got a load more to get rid of still got so much more to get rid of but it does seem to be doing it some good it's letting some more air through i'm looking at like these are the freshest loveliest looking leaves it's had for the last two or three years so i'm hoping that that is a good sign so we'll, i'll update you on that i'll see if i managed to get any apples from it this year yeah so this bit needs uh weeding i need to cover it with a layer of compost i have got some things growing down here there's some lamb's lettuce that self-seeded last year there is some good king henry here which i have found I would say worth growing if you've got a little bit of space and you want something that's easy to grow. I've tried cooking with it and it doesn't taste of anything. I do quite like it chopped up in salads though, so I'll probably keep it. I'll probably keep growing it. There's a few winter radishes left over. There's some autumn planted onions, which hmm, they're alive is about the best thing I could say about them. They aren't doing particularly well, <laughs> but, um, but we shall see, it's early days early days and then I have all of this rubbish here so let me try and explain to you what I'm going to do with uh, this section so uh, let's look let's let's give you the view from here right so we've got apple tree here which is going to be hopefully rescued this year and then all of this section here I want to be a vegetable plot and I want to lift up these slabs that I think used to have a cold frame on it at one point. Lift up these slabs um, and kind of incorporate that into the vegetable plot. And then where this concrete is, 
I want to put up either like a little fence or a bit of trellis or something like that so I can grow something um, like an evergreen climber up it which will then screen this bottom part of the garden which is like the working area of the garden it's going to be where all the storage is and then this section down here which is also it's just covered in so much junk let me show you all my junk that needs sorting out I've got a bird table there that needs rescuing um, it just needs the base redoing yeah so lots and lots of rubbish here but what I want to do is kind of cover that over and with some weed suppressing membrane and some pea shingle and just turn this into a proper storage area where things are stacked nicely um, I've got all of this wood here that I need to go through and just check to see if any of it um, is any use still there's loads of pots to go through I've got some um, chairs to put together and then I have got I've got a compost bin a storage like a key to storage unit there's a chimney there uh, what else have we got it's another compost bin that needs sorting out and then generally speaking a load of rubbish so lots of prunings here that need chipping and shredding and try and get this whole area sorted out there's some nice things down here it's a lovely forsythia there is a, a red robin fratinia i think that is with the red tips on it i'd like some more of that actually and um, there's also a couple of raspberries down here raspberry canes but yeah it's all got it's all got a bit messed up <laughs> down here it's all incredibly untidy and i think i must have shown this to you about two years ago and it genuinely has not got any better i think if anything it's got worse um so yeah so that's that's the garden at the moment and it would have been nice of me to uh, tidy up look that's all the ivy i've been picking off the tree i want to make sure it's completely dead before i um, do anything with it this is beautiful though this area this is the area that's had the most love and care and kind of been tended to the most but yes yeah, so lots to do lots to do and then yeah this is my view from where i sit at the table it's um it's very nice just you can see why i want to screen off the storage area though can't you <laughs> and it is very very messy well i hope you enjoyed your tour around my garden i think you'll agree it's very messy there's a lot of work that needs doing and to be honest i just haven't had the energy or the inclination to do that over the last couple of years because of well you know everything i am looking forward to making more videos of all the different jobs and the things that i get done in the garden so don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done already and i will see you again soon